Hello, good afternoon, welcome to Hi. the Daily Live, me and John here to uh, talk about, to start off with, uh, Jared Brantwaite, who Fabrizio Romano has claimed Everton will name their price in May mm. for, for Jared Brantwaite, who is certain to join Man United, because Jim Ratcliffe and Dan Ashworth have decided that that's what's going to happen. Who they're taking yeah. this summer, uh, which is... Interesting. Fine. Okay, we'll have Rasmus Hoyland. Thank you very much, because we'll just decide we want him. <laughs> but, I mean, where, where are you up to with, with the brand? Is, is it... Oh, let me put it to you this way. Is this just where we are now as a club that we just have to accept that the minute we get anyone decent, we're selling them? Because no. we're in a mess. No. Do you not see it like that? Not at all. Okay. We'll go on then. Have well, you say, how do you view it? And how would you well, deal with Jared this? in particular? Yeah, like, how would you deal with this at the moment, this moving forward? Okay, brand so, 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 so let's have first things first. Mm. Fabrizio Romano, mm. right, has allegedly said this. Mm. To find out if he really said it, you have to pay. Yeah. So it's clickbait, right? Yeah. It's paywall clickbait. So he probably will have said it, because that's what he says. He says about yeah, the word could is in the quote. <laughs> we could set the price in May. Yeah, yeah. I think the price is set already, and I think I've tweeted about it. And The way I tweeted it was, well, everyone knows what the price is. It's what just is it? how... F- <laughs> Come to it. Okay, yeah? yeah. It's just how far above 100 million a club is going to have to pay okay. to win the to win the race mm. because yeah man united good luck going early on it and well done you should be mm. because there's gonna this this kid's gonna be under in great demand he really is mm. I, I personally i'd be really surprised if he doesn't get an england call up and if he gets an england call up and he gets some minutes he will show that he can perform at that level as well mm. and then he should be a player who goes to the euros not necessarily as a first choice but in the squad for the experience and all those sorts of things. And they add value to your price, don't they? England mm. International, all that sort of stuff. English, left footed, six foot five. What's there not to love about a man who's so cool, right? Yeah. Um, but Man United, it won't be a one a one horse race. Mm. Um, we, Everton, knew quite a while ago this kid's really, really good. Mm. And it last season, last year, whenever you want to call it signed a five-year contract yeah so there's no need for us to sell per se in that you know like cricket scoreboard pressure there's no pressure of an emerging end of contract like there is with a dcl for example yeah yeah um and therefore we just need to stay cool and and the old adage if you have got a functional business is all players have their price we as everton fans can all observe how useful it would be for us to have a substantial sum of money to both you know alleviate any fears of psr or whatever it, the new new version's called you know comes along um but it has to be our price mm. it has to be our price um, my concern would be which is why i think fabrizio is being a bit silly is um one um there will be interest from from others of course two who's going to make the decision to set the price because it isn't going to be Kevin Thelwell, that's for sure. Mm. And it isn't going to be Colin Chong, that's also for sure. Mm-hmm. So as a business that's flying by the seat of its pants while sitting on them at the same time, you know, no one's around who can make an objective decision on whether we should or shouldn't sell. Yeah. And it won't be the manager because the manager's tenure is probably open for debate as well, depending on the outcome of the season. So it's just lovely clickbait on the back of, you know, Man United just like any top club, have aspirations to try and get a, a, a quality player like Jared into their into their squad. Let me ask you this: Then do you actually? That's how you would do it. Oh, absolutely, right? yeah. But do you actually believe that Everton will operate like that? Because I think a lot of fans will be very, will almost be resigned to the fact that if Man United offer fifty million, he's gone. Because Everton won't, I don't personally Everton won't have the force okay. to to turn around and I go. I personally no do not think there is any chance whatsoever that Everton would accept such a low bid. Okay, none whatsoever. Okay. That said, I've just said who's going to make such a decision, mm. right? And um, because by my observation, um, significant decisions are, just aren't getting made. Mm. I mean, crikey, you know, the football club thinks that. We have to wait for a new owner before we decide whether we have general meetings or not. Yeah, um, I can't imagine that we're we're going to then make a decision to sell one of your prize assets without asking a new owner what they think, mm. right? Um, and know. Everton may well have a new owner. Well, 
one would hope they'd have a new owner well, by the time this actually becomes well, a well absolutely yeah and, and and clearly some of what comes into play is what jared thinks i mean christian horner who's the um team principal at red bull formula one mm. the dominant team if you like in that sport are they yeah Okay, they are yeah. the Man City of that sport, oh, okay. if you will, right? Nice, yeah. And they, and their principles under severe pressure for private things and stuff, but not, not notwithstanding all that. Yeah. And he said in the last couple of days, um, we may lose the best driver in Formula One at the moment, Max Verstappen, nice. because if he doesn't want to be here, we'll let him go. Hmm. And that's the only pragmatic thing you can do. And he's diffused it, all the rumours about he's not getting on with you, he wants to leave. Well, hey... Anyone who doesn't want to be here can go, mm. um, but they go under our terms. And yeah. our terms, Everton's terms, that is, have to be the most expensive centre-back in football history because mm. that's how good he is. Yeah. Tell me somebody who should have gone for more than Jared at his age. You know, 21, six foot five, comfortable on the ball, left footer, mm. English, I mean, the nearest to him in recent times is John Stones, I suppose, mm. who, well, how long ago was that? He went for 50 million eight years ago. Yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? That, it's crazy. I mean, Harry Maguire went for 80-odd 80. 80 million. Van Dyke 75. But Maguire more so 80-odd. Yeah. From Leicester. Leicester we're messing well, Ma around. Well, Maguire we're makes in. Van Dyke look, well, she is, mm. in comparison, sniff, an yeah. absolute bargain, mm. you know? But you... I mean, Van Dyke was a bargain when Martin could have bought him, but yeah. shows Funes, Murray and Step. But well, hey, there was a bargain when uh, Southampton bought him. Mm, no, that's what I mean. Yeah. Even to, you know, but the thing about what I think, what Evertonians have got to look at, and what shit, not necessarily what Evertonians have got to look at, what Everton Football Club have got to look at is Leicester City set the example. Of course, there is. Leicester City turned round and went, no, no, we want 90, 80 odd million for Harry Wright, or he's mm. not going. Yeah, and, yeah, and that's the end of the story. And I'd love Everton to be like that. You see, because for me, what Everton should be looking to do this summer is only sell one of him or Onana. Yeah. And it's more likely to be Amadou Onana. I would think the so. Lads, I think he's decided. He's done well. He's stuck it out. You know, he could have gone, whatever. He stayed, right? If you're blunt about it, if, so, if one of those two players is going to push for a move, hmm? it's more likely to You'd be think it would yeah. be Onana. Yeah. And Everton's, Everton's succession planning, should be in place already. Oh, Nana, this summer, Jared Brantwaite, yeah, next summer. absolutely. And that should that should be their mo. And, yeah. and Brantwaite was happy to sign a new deal a few couple of months ago yeah, yeah, to absolutely. get big money, bigger money for himself, which is right. He was right, you know. I, I'm all for rewarding good players who perform at a high level. So, Everton should be comfortable enough to say to him, Jared, I'm not selling you this summer, no matter what, mate. End off next summer, we'll have a chat about it. you have another good season, then we will. Will look to let you go next summer. So the lad knows exactly where he is. There's no arsing about, and no amount of speculation is going to change Everton's mind. And we need strong people in. And that is the angle I'd come at it from. That being said, right now, I'm not convinced that that's Everton's angle. I'm not even convinced Everton would get the best price for him because I think we're, we're a, a club of weak people. And when I mean weak people, I don't mean the individuals. I just mean there is nobody driving this ship forward. There's nobody. It's Sean Dyche, if anyone. Right? Kevin no, Thelwell. No. I don't know. No, no one. This is my view, John, and no, I, no, I didn't no, yeah. come in on yours with a late tackle, so you respect. I don't see anyone moving the needle anywhere at this club right now, which is why we've gone f nearly four months without a victory. Because we're I keep saying it, we're in the middle of the the water without a bleeding light jacket on at the moment and there's no one coming to help and it's why we need a decision from the Premier League and we'll get on to them in a minute because that's the next set of news with the fun and I know you've, you've very informed on that one as well this needs a conclusion this the takeover stuff because for this football club we need to know whether Farad Mashiri needs to go back out into the market and lift the skirts up a bit higher and try to attract these faceless shadows hiding, you know, people hiding in the shadows, or if there's just any other sharks around who want to, because that's all we're getting. We're not getting anyone with a, a great vision that wants to take Evan to the very top if this if this triple seven thing collapses. It needs to be sorted so that we can get people in, so that we can do the things you were talking about and the things I'm talking about, which is make a strong decision. This is, um, thanks for the speech, cool. Yeah. Um, that's what you're describing as a symptom, mm, right? Yeah. 
and, and you know, and if anyone watches the business stuff that we do, yeah. that's a symptom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the behavior is an excuse, right? Um, and, and, and I have some sympathy for the people who say, um, the only guy who can fix this is Farhad Mashiri, right? So let, let me put my cards on the table, yeah? Premier League have, have exposed themselves, obviously, and across a raft, and we can talk about PSR in a minute if yeah, you wish. Yeah, that, yeah. But across the piece that their their process is not fit for purpose. Hmm. Okay, we know full well, don't we all, that the Premier League met with Triple Seven last week. It wasn't Triple Seven spin. It really happened. Blah blah blah. Right. We are currently assuming that was the last port of call before they sent off their decision to the independent audit panel. Right. Uh, sorry, oversight panel. And therefore, we can anticipate a decision one way or the other, right? It's an Everton Football Club choice at board level, lest we forget the board is Colin and Farhad and John Spellman to sit on their hands for the last six months and let the ship float in the ocean, hmm. okay? Um, you can kick the can down the road yeah. if you want, Um but ultimately, you have to confront constraint. You, know, you, you can't avoid it. You mm. may be able to delay it. Often, kicking the can down the road makes it worse because you're putting off decisions. This is a board who are happy to make a decision to leave the stadium empty, empty for eight months, right? Yeah. Um, but it doesn't seem able to make other decisions like should you have general meetings or not? Should you sell players or not? What's the finances and so on and so forth? So I have great sympathy for some of, for the employees in the process. Yeah. Colin being the poor guy out front, and none of this really is Colin's fault per se. No, no, right? um, not at all. When I say weak, I mean there's no, no, no leadership. So I'm, yeah, I'd be I'm weak if I was in there because no one's telling me what I can yeah, and you can't. Your go. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> no, but yeah, yeah, you're right. Mm. Uh, this isn't personalising. No, nope, but at this all. is a dysfunctional organisation which is inert at the moment simply because it's chosen not to make decisions, or it has made decisions. We just don't know what they are. Yeah, right, so. But when you come to a player, the selling of a player, that should be at the end of a process. What's the budget? What do we want to spend on players? How do we afford that? We're yeah. going to have to sell one. Which one shall we sell? You know, all those sorts of things, which are all part of a normal process for running of a football club, a Premier League football club, especially so. Therefore, Kevin Thelwell, in a, and we've done this on the sofa, in a lovely world, he knows what sort of budget he's trying to put together for the for the playing side next season. Yeah, he submitted that to the board. The board have agreed. Yay, based on ifs and buts, like what division will we be in, for example. He's had the conversations with the manager, and let's be blunt about it and use phrases like sacrifice. Which quality players out of your squad are you prepared to sacrifice for the greater good? Which is your argument about? In an ideal world, you want to keep Amadou and Arna and you'd want to keep Jordan Pickford and you want to keep Jared Branthwaite, but there's a whole host of others you're not fussed about. But unfortunately, they're not necessarily the ones clubs want to buy, right? And so you have to come out the transfer window in a better place than you went into it, right? If you're letting one of your star players go, then the only way you go out the window better is if you use the money wisely and or, and I think it should be and, you've levelled off your concerns about any breach of profitability, sustainability, those sorts of things. Now, the thing is about Everton right now, and until we see the accounts and stuff like that, we don't know how what our proximity is to breaching a PSR would be again next January. But we do know that we will definitely see those accounts two ways. One, they'll be published at Company's House and we can all see them. Two, the Independent Commission will no doubt quote the numbers for us all to see, right? And then we'll know that when the season's finished, there's a short window of opportunity for us to sell players, like Leicester might have to do, for example, yeah, or other clubs, to, to get compliant. So if we're fans, we think, you know what? If the 1st of June comes first of july sorry comes and we haven't sold anyone we're in a better place than we we feared aren't we yeah because we must know that that year's okay 
Or we're doing a Nottingham Forest and know that a Jared Branthwaite or an Amadou Anana are going to be worth more the other side of the Euros rather than this side. So it's all noise and it's all unknowns. But as we can hope, and I know what you're saying, which is, yeah, but I don't believe they, they can or they do. All we can hope is they've got some good process around it. They know what they want to do. This is the plan, the dive bit, isn't it? Mm. And then they just need to uh, dive the plan. Um, but I'm with you, you know, and bless him. Um, this is the sort of stuff that Ken Wright would do, and he's not here. I don't know who's filled that void of ace negotiator, if you like, whether you think he was or he wasn't. But what's clearly... Um, clear as day you don't want directors of football in isolation doing negotiations you certainly don't want transient managers doing negotiations and making decisions on who goes and who stays because that's how we got in this mess in the first place we have got players that benitez wanted we have got players that somebody else wanted we've got mm. and so on and so on and some of them stick around like a bad smell mm. don't they and but that's not their fault it's our fault and we need to be bold around our more bold around our decision making because you know if you're bold around your decision making and they're based on calculated risks which are based on open debate and then you know producing a plan if the plan says you know what if we get x millions for amadou anana adios amigo if we get y millions for branthwaite in the same window that's also adios amigo you know mm but this is what we'll do right this is what we'll do in those circumstances yeah but you're right i, I some of the public pronouncements about you can't plan too far ahead because of the precarious financial circumstances we find ourselves in which is what kevin has said in the past you know what my reaction is to that that's worrying because it just means you have more scenarios and the scenarios have to include what if we sell an honor what if we sell Branthwaite? What if we sell both? There's three scenarios. And what you do as a consequence of that must be different by, by the availability of funds, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, this should, I mean, Branthwaite should be anywhere between 80 to 100 million and the club shouldn't be looking any less than that, really, when you look at the likes of Casado. Why would you go, why would you accept for, less than 100 million no, other I'm than you're saying, financially distressed? You've just got to, I'm saying that, that to me is the marker. That the, that's the area. 100 million, we can all go 100 million for them. Job done. I'm just saying, they can't, the defo can't go lower than that. Um, Gareth, no, I haven't seen much Sky Sports have put out about the Premier League, so do enlighten me. Uh, Richard Masters must be worried, he said, but I don't know. Oh, okay. uh, Kev, no, I haven't had Dr. Pepper today. <laughs> just in case. Uh, I've seen someone say 30 million is a fair price for Branthwaite. So that's a red shot. And I've I no idea. <laughs> and then I've seen others saying 120 million. So there you go. Uh, moving on, John, to yep. they announced yesterday that PSR rules are going to change. Yeah. <laughs> Which is hilarious that they're, uh, they're changing it so. As as we it's thought, not a surprise, is it? Everton will be Everton and Forest probably the only clubs done under the the old ruling system because City have kicked the can down the road. Chelsea seem to have just been forgotten about. Chelsea seems to have got away with with it all. Um, they're still under investigation, is what Mister Masters says, isn't it? I mean, on Sky, it's just got what this means for Everton, Forest, and City. There's not even a mention. I've just read the thing. Not even a mention. It doesn't mean anything to any of those yeah. clubs. So, well, this, this is just a simple change say, in how they calculate what a breach means. So, go on then. What for you? Go on. What 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 have you taken from it? What what does it actually mean in real terms? These changes to PSR. Well, for the audience's benefit, mm. if you go on our Substack, you'll see an article I wrote a month ago. Yeah. Right. But in very simple terms, there's two things here. Always two things, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. So on. we go right to left. What it doesn't do, yeah. Um, that that. The expectation. If we say so, let's start again. They're basing this on UEFA's squad ratio. Yeah. Right. So if, if we base it on that and how that works, right, then it literally is trying to control spend on players. So you don't have any dispute about whether that was part of a stadium or not. Yeah. And it's very simple. And the cost of players, if you keep it very simple, 
you can go and bore yourselves, people, by reading it all if you want. Read my article. It's a bit of an abridged version. And this is an abridged version of that. Very simply, when you buy players, you suffer amortization. Yeah. Yeah. When you buy players, you probably suffer agents' fees. When you buy players, you suffer their wages. If you take the aggregate of those in a given reporting period, say a season, it's a calendar year for UEFA, then a limit is set that you have to keep within when those numbers are added up. That limit is a percentage of your turnover. Dead simple. 70, 80, 90%, right? UEFA are phasing it in. So you start off with X percent, then it becomes Y percent, then the ultimate target is 70%, yeah. right? So it ultimately means that the amount you can spend on players is 70% of your turnover, right? And the, the number that has got to be less than 70% or less is the aggregate of all the money you spend, give to players on wages, all the amortization you're suffering, and whatever you give to agents, right? And that's it. Now, the way UEFA do it is they then have a, a chart which says, and if you breach it by this amount, this is the punishment. If you breach it by that amount, this is the punishment. If you breach it by that amount, this is the pun punishment. If you are a repeat offender, this is the punishment, okay? okay. And it, so it's very codified, yeah? You would know if we breach, that's the punishment. And the punishment, at least in the early parts of being naughty, is a fine. Right, only repeat offenders are going to come into other punishments like squad restrictions and and all those sorts of things. Clearly, that will allow people as pundits to comment, and it doesn't include a points deduction. But in the grand scheme of things, a points deduction is hardly appropriate in a UEFA competition, is it? Really? Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. You get one point deducted in mm -hmm. in the Champions, the League, Champions League. League. Yeah. yeah. So so UEFA are going down the route of. And I'll use the words, the, the, the punishment for a breach of a financial regulation is a financial punishment, which makes sense. And the Premier League are going to, if you will, follow that lead about a squad ratio. Because at the end of the day, this is a salary cap by another name. Yeah. Um, but people seem to have leapt to a conclusion that, and when they do that, points deductions will be a thing of the past. Yeah because Premier League will follow UEFA and say no points deductions are not really what we're about. I'm not convinced by that, to be honest. Okay. I mean, at one stage last night, because I was sort of reading Twitter streams and stuff, I thought I'd missed some grand announcement that said exactly how it was going to work. Yeah. But um, I don't think that's happened, the grand announcement. All they've said is they're going to do this as quickly as possible, which is curious because Richard Masters said no new thing was going to come in for next so season. Clue, right. um, but, and the big but, it, it will need to be phased. And I think the lethargy that we've endured as Everton fans of not acquiring new players because we can't afford them will probably mean that we won't breach this thing. And, and I know... Um, Kieran Maguire did a little chart based on lots of assumptions, but roughly half the Premier League, in his mind, would be in breach of it, mm. and the other half would not. And we're in the half that would not. Yeah, lots of that. lots of assumptions around it. But, I saw that, but yeah. it is a, a reasonable indicator. The problem is, and even Kev put a put Kieran rather put a health warning on it that you know this is based on assumptions. The, the, as Emma said, that was just another way to protect the the Glycics. Oh, oh, absolutely. Because um, it's great yeah. going, well, you know, Liverpool can only spend, and Manchester oh, can only spend 70% of what they bring in. Yep, they bring in 800 oh, million. And Forrest and Everton can only spend 70% of 100 absolutely. million. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's utter, it's pointless. I mean, if you read my article, that, that just, if you can't, it's, it's like an eight minute read. But if you just fast forward to the bottom, bottom, the last paragraph, you will see in the grand scheme of things, it changes nothing. The haves will remain the haves. And those who both UEFA and the Premier League appear to treat as if they're making up the numbers will still be making up the numbers. The thing is, I mean, Gary Neville said on that overlap last week that we did, the only fair way to do it, to continue, to, to still give you hope as a fan, is that everyone can spend as much as the top club. So yeah. Man City's 
I've got five hundred million to spend. Great, Everton great should, shout. and Forest and Luton should mm. be. Now the reality is Luton haven't never gone have five hundred million no, to no. spend. But the hopes there that they might. Mm. The hope for every supporter in the Premier League is that a sheik comes in. With, is that like a shake or a shake, 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 whatever, shake uh, comes in with billions of pounds and wants to wants to spend five hundred million on my club in the transfer market? Yes, they've got to guarantee it and all that, so it's not putting the club in any kind of danger. But that hope will remain there then. So the hope for us as Evertonians and any fan of any other club we were watching will be, well. One day we might make that money. Where the way it is now it depends what you think the, the the mechanism is for. Whether it's to protect the haves or is it? No, to but that's level... what I'm saying. If you're trying, if you're genuinely trying to sell this product, and I think we all know now it is by far. It's you know it's clear as day. It's not the best league in the world at mm. all. The most hyped load of nonsense because the games are mm. grim. League in the world, but you have to have that belief that one day it might be you. Yeah. Now, right now, and the way the rules are heading for me, this is just a personal opinion, it just means the best Everton can ever do seventh, unless everything goes perfect, mm. every decision they make is perfect, do a Leicester, like. players explode yeah. and just go off the scale like Mares and Kante did, and yeah. you get it. You don't find back. a brand weight, you find three or exactly. four yeah, of them. Exactly. Yeah. And it, they all pop at the same time, and everything's perfect. You don't get any injuries, and you win the league. The reality with those clubs, and Newcastle have found this even with all the resources, and, and Villa may well find it next year, who knows, is that to follow it up, because Leicester did, to follow it up is, is nearly impossible you know, to follow it up again. It, it, if we base... Um, because I agree with that, mm. by the way. Um, clearly, you'd have to have some mechanisms around it mm. because if as if you're not one of the haves, you think it's actually designed to protect the big clubs. Well, too, it is, isn't right? it? Uh, so you move away from it's about stopping insolvency and things like yeah. that. Well, then, well, why but, don't we just call it what it is? Why yeah, yeah. don't the Premier League yeah. just you yeah. know, stop lying? But, but the reality is that there are other vehicles, that's, there's other mechanisms, there's other pulleys and levers you could use to protect the clubs from going out of business. So let's do a real-life example, right? But before we do the real-life example, the club who's furthest away from being able to comply with, if you like, Kieran's you know, working example yeah. is Newcastle. Right, so straight away. Yeah. They're the biggest victims, therefore, aren't they? Mm. Right? Yes. Um, according to this, the squad cap that would be applied to Man City would be around 500 million. So I just used that figure. Yeah. Right. So they could spend 500 million a year, every year, on amortization, agents' fees, wages. Apparently, at the moment, they're spending something like 425. So they've got headroom. So with wages and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've got £75 million pounds headroom. Yeah, so they've got headroom. Um, and they, surprise, surprise, they've got the most headroom. If we then compare that to Everton, we apparently, our squad cap would be around £150 million, thereabouts. And on published accounts and stuff, we're at about 145 yeah, thereabouts, right? So in over simple terms, their headroom is 10 times the size of ours, right? And yet, their turnover, whatever, ratio things, only three times the size. So you can see how it favours the haves, yeah. right? In your example, putting words into your mouth, all right. if there was a mechanism... People try that every day. Yeah, yeah, but you'll agree that it's okay. Mm. Um, in your example, you would say, okay, so according to their turnover, Everton can spend 150 million quid a year on this stuff, yeah. right? But they should be allowed to spend 500 million yeah, because that's because Manchester. That's what Manchester City can. Yeah. whoever's top of that little league table. Yeah. However, that all has to come from the owner. Okay. Yeah. And therefore, you've got to have proof of funds. You've got yeah. to put it somewhere where it can be spent, and so on. But no longer would a new owner who wants to invest in his own business feel constrained by the regulations. No. There'd be zero likelihood of Everton as a football club going out of business. Of course. Except. Right, you'd have to make the owner put every penny that would satisfy that spend for, say, three years, 
yeah? Um, otherwise, if he pulled stumps and walked away, you'd still be left with players under contract you can't afford and all those. Stuff. But you'd always have the remedy of selling them. You know what I mean? And that's all. So, that's so, always been there, don't you? Exactly right. And we're suffering from it, right? Mm. So, so there are ways and means. And that would then suddenly, you'd find a situation where all of a sudden, perhaps Newcastle's the best example. Of course, yeah. You know, if you look at if we look at Newcastle's, they their cap according to well, they're over at the moment, right? So they'd be in trouble, right? So at the moment, their wages cap should be one thirty, and the sell the spending over two hundred. So they'd be in breach of the rules, breach, right? Yeah. But based on what we just said, their cap wouldn't be one thirty; it'd be five hundred. Mm. So the a so they'd have, if the owners were prepared to fund it, they wouldn't be breaching the they'd rules. Have 370 and million they'd have three hundred and seventy million. Great potential to buy players. Mm. City actually then would end up at the bottom of this table, not the top, right? Because they're right up against their cap. But they don't have to maintain them. And that's the point. They've made their investment. And so what you would presumably expect over time is that more and more clubs would start getting close to what the league maximum is, which is set by the one spending the most. Yeah. The club with the biggest turnover would set the, 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 the high watermark for the cap. And pretty much anyone who's got owners, anyone who's got owners who prepares to put their hand in the pocket, would be able to encroach upon them. Because and what we'd find was almost overnight, Newcastle would be right in there, wouldn't they? Mm. Ped, let me just bring you in on this, because obviously the the rule changes came out last night, or, or we, sorry, we heard, we heard about them yesterday. I mean, just looking at it, like I just said there, to John, it just, it, and a lot of people are saying anything, it does seem as though it's there to just protect the top clubs. But... I, is it what about what we've just been saying? Like certainly what I've just been saying. Do you agree that there could be Gary Neville's system could work better? I know people will be worried, going, well, that just means Newcastle can spend money, but that's the way it is, isn't it? Because at the moment, it means no one other than them six can spend money. So what? What's your early takes on it, and how do you think they could get round it if it isn't going to be a salary cap, which we know we think is is the best way anyway? Um, it's just moving the deck chairs, isn't it? Basically, but what it's done is brought it in line with UEFA so that obviously teams that are in European competition we can all at the moment the system is nonsense because we've got a Premier League system that didn't even work with the EFL system, this didn't work with the UEFA system. So, how would any club at any one time know, know where they were? You know, a team playing in Europe would have to have different guidelines, and, and of course, teams coming up from the EFL would have to. So it's right that we have one principle. I just don't think this is it. I've seen some stuff last night saying Everton would pass with this, which is great. But it, if it stops basically anyone moving on in football, then what's the point of it? It's no different than what we have. Yeah, it's just changing the deck chairs, isn't it? That's all it is, moving on the deck chairs. So what do you think of then Gary Neville's idea then? Do you, think, do you like what, that? What's Gary Neville's so idea? Basically, sorry, Gary, I was, I was listening it. to Sean Dyche. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Right, right. So sorry, basically... Sorry, sorry if that makes you feel bad. <laughs> no, it doesn't make me feel bad. That's just why I would just use that. But there you go. Because I'm a... Cause I'm a He's an insomnia. Yeah, I, I was, yeah, because we've got shows to do. It's a bit of a joke and well, you took it too you seriously. Know. Gary Neville basically said to keep football alive so it doesn't become mm. a separate entity with those six clubs he believes every club should have the ability to spend what the top club can spend so and just by, fund it differently just oh, fund, yeah. so so say like man city in a year can spend 500 million yeah. on wages and players then Luton Town, or let's use Sheffield United because they're bottom Sheffield United should be able to spend 500 million whether they can is a yeah, that's, thing, that's but they that's should be allowed. That's to, not that's hope. That's not too dissimilar to what we've been talking about about the salary cap. Yeah, though. yeah, that's totally. not that's not too similar. What you're saying mm. is whoever's got the most money, everyone else can have the same as them. Yes, and that's the bar. Mm. Yes, and that's and what we the hope alive. But though. that's what we've been saying about the salary cap is that it's not restrictive. No one ever said that the way we've been talking about it is restrictive. The way we've said it is is that the salary cap will be quite high. It'll just and most clubs won't get anywhere near exactly. It. It'll but just choice. It'll yeah. just stop the idea of of what's going on at the moment. It'll stop, um, or it hopefully would stop stockpiling. It would give everybody a, a bit more of a chance, and ultimately, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't stop clubs like Everton or Forest or a Luton or anyone else out there who 
fancies a go at being a bit more than what they are right now than doing that. And, and that doesn't stop. That doesn't... Huh? That, it's like, not going to clip the wings of the big clubs. It doesn't stop Liverpool. It doesn't stop City. It just says to them, well, everyone else has got to go. Now, I've said for ages, why do Man United... Why is Man United... Why are Man United allowed to just basically spend what they want just because they've got... They sell more shirts than anyone else? How's that football? That's not football. That's merchandise. That's so merchandise. if you're... Uh, so what I... What Sorry, I was, but your next message there would be it's not fair that they've got a bigger ground no no it's, it's not, not no, 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 no 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 not at all I John, income I, is income not a, not at all not at all but why Manchester United which has built a, fit, a fan base over over 50, 60, 70, 80 years around the world over 100 but yeah, yeah. no but around the world yeah. no, you're, no we're I, talking okay, about, worldwide we're talking, you mean yeah, we're okay. talking that's because that's where they sell the shirts why are they allowed to? Why are they allowed to benefit from something which is historical mm. over other clubs, which are which are maybe newer to to people because of the Premier League, like a Leicester City, say, who people have only discovered? Because them. in social terms, yeah, the Premier League lives in a world where there's old money and new money, and they don't like new money. Exactly. Yet. So what we're saying, well, I think we're saying new money's just as good as old money. It's just how you what, present it. And Ped's right in a way. And I that, agree with him. Is that they at United are benefiting also because they're on they've been on telly historically more than anybody exactly. else. So they're spread everywhere. So you're giving someone a leg up as it is. And okay. They've been successful and that gra grabs people. They're on telly most because when they're on telly, more people watch. No, no, of I, course, I, of I understand course. it, but you're still you're still skewing a competition. Mm. It's you're self fueling. You feel that's it. You are. They the are. They are getting a leg up from already being a bigger club yeah. than you. So how do you ever bridge that gap? Yeah, yeah. You know, I want to be Molly Brown in this. You know what I mean? I want to be unsinkable. Let them be the Titanic. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I, I, I want us to be able to go and others to go, because it's not just one club. It should be. It. We should be a little bit more Newcastle. If Newcastle start rocking the boat, that'll that'll make waves and that'll help everybody. I mm. think. That's, you know, but, I think as a That's fan, thing, I mean, see, I don't know what Jennifer's on about here. Jennifer embarrassing shouts, hoping for a sheik to come in. No, they're not going to introduce a salary cap or a transfer cap, are they? They're just not going to do it. So you have to look at ways around it. So it's not really embarrassing saying someone with a ton of money coming in to try and upset other clubs with a ton of money. The embarrassment is that it's already in here. Yeah. So we're saying a sure cut to that is that that's what people will want because it's money. And it's not even, it's the only way. So if, you, if you're if you happy, Jennifer, it I don't know whether you're Nevertonian or you're not. If you're happy to go, well, the best Everton can ever owe for is seventh. And that's by getting everything right. And if this money keeps trickling in, seventh will be off the table soon as well if Newcastle improve. If you're happy to just go, well, that's just the way it is, and 15's great, fine. I'm not telling you, you know, to change you're, your mind. You're right. But you're all right. I'm saying, for me, what it would do if they'd done it Gary Neville's way, it would give every fan hope that one day, well, it could be someone who wins the bloody lottery when the lottery becomes a yeah. billion pounds or something, can make your club better. Because right now, they're just running. So like Pez just said, it's not going to slow down Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool, if these rules come in, because they're already got the run on everyone. There is another way. But go on then. A, which is a version on Gary's one, right? Because it's like you're talking about an arms race. Hmm? The other guy's got a million nuclear weapons, so I need a million. Another guy's got 700,000, I need a million, so yeah. and so forth. And the net result is everyone has lots and lots and lots yeah. of nuclear weapons. Or you get the guy with a million to say, why don't you get rid of half a million of your bombs? Because then the lie's now drawn at half a million, quarter of a million enough you mm -hmm. know what i mean so what we've talked about on the channel which is never going to happen by the way no but just to for balance there is another way one way is you allow everybody to spend what the the most successful club with the biggest turnover can spend as long as the owner's funding it yeah right the other way is everybody can spend 250 million pound a year on the on these assets mm. right regardless of what they're currently spending yeah yeah and if you're man city you've got to shed 150 million pounds worth of cost well, that's a good way of doing right? it but it's not going to happen and that's not going to happen but that then would is the other that's slowing down well, the, the simon, arms rates simon said something which is obviously what happens in american sports and like you know i'm looking at mls and things like that what about turning the cap around now if they genuinely wanted yeah. to improve the competition the if they way. went look We've created the best competition and we don't want just teams dominating it. If they do dominate it because they're great coaches and they're able to do whatever, brilliant. But the team at the bottom can spend. So the team who's promoted 
via the playoffs because that are, the least. essentially they be 20th at the start. Logically. They yeah. can spend the most money. Their cap yeah. is the most money. And Man City win it or Liverpool win it or Arsenal win it. You can spend the least, mate, because you're already the cream of the cream. That's what MLS do. I know they do it with like trades and stuff and everything, but there's never two teams don't genuinely win it two years on the run. There's, there's a big difference, right? A, a, a the culture in North America around drafts oh, and other know, sports know, and so on. Mm. MLS is a relatively new league. It's not been around, you know, well over 100 years. Mm. We are a product of it's evolved. Yeah. It's why they have a grid system for roads and we have back streets, you know, sort mm. of thing. Um, but, yeah, if you if you were going to go for revolution rather than evolution and just rip up everything up and say the object of the exercise is to have the top 10 teams in the division might win it, the bottom 10 teams might get relegated, that's what we call balance. How can we achieve it? But that's not what's going to happen, is it? And cream always rises to the top, right? And so, again, using a Formula One analogy, when you've got Red Bull winning every single race, there are people out there who may advocate to have reverse grids. So the very best team are on the back of the grid, yeah. right? But they never ever get to the belief that that's actually good for the sport no. because you can't, it's very difficult to overtake 19 cars, even if the one at the front's really, really slow. So you run the risk overall, you lower the standard. Of course, if the Premier League did that, it would emphatically lower the standard unless all the other major leagues did it as well, which means you've got to align with UEFA because you've got to get France and Italy and Spain and so on to do exactly the same thing. Yeah. That requires a joining together of multinational owners to step up. Oh, let's call it a Super League, right? So they go down the Super League route instead of the let's harmonise the division. But the facts of life are right now, the Saudi owners of Newcastle, I mean, I know you schooled Mr. Scholes on this, didn't you? Probably a few years ago few now. Years ago now. Where he thought they were just going to buy all the best players, suddenly jump into top four and win the league. Mm. And the rules don't allow them. No. I think what we're all saying here is the rules should allow them. I, I'm, I'm not in favour of that suggestion, by the way. Which one? The one about uh, the bottom team should get more. Uh, I think that's too far. No, it wouldn't no, have never happen anyway, would it? He's saying the cap would be higher it, for the It just never team. happened, well, would it? I'm, I'm, I think that's where, I think that's where we're, we're handing out uh, sort of the participation in my It's never, never going to happen, no, so. I, I just think, I yeah. think, the way you, the, the Gary Neville wants more sensible. There will always be a hierarchy. I don't think you should be awarding people more money or allowing them to spend more money just because they're not as good as you. People have worked really hard to get their teams to the top of the league. You're contradicting yourself now. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Because we're talking about, we're talking about giving them more money just because they're not very good. I'm not in favour of that. They no, because be they've come up through the leagues and have finally got into the Premier League and have no chance of competing because their turnover is 30 million and Manchester City's no, is 600. There has to be a point mm, where you stop. There's got to be something. There's got to be a point for me, John, where you stop. And Yours stop. might be like, though, and Ped, I think Ped will say it, like the 250 million. Yeah, yeah, He's not yeah. saying you shouldn't no, be able to spend it. You're saying yeah, yeah. it. You shouldn't get more money for the team. Yeah. The league, in my eye, I but the no, they're not getting more money. They get a higher cap. Well, even that, I don't agree with. Okay, you. fair I enough. Think that, I think that you are, at that point, starting to skew that what the hard work people, see it. Yeah. people have done. I just think I think the Gary Neville one's more of more of because you've just said it yourself. If, to do that, you have to get all your ducks in a row, and I yeah, think yeah. that would be really difficult. Mm -hmm. For me, it is more just saying. Actually, the closer we can get to everyone being to spend what they want, mm -hmm. but in a sensible way, yeah. is what we should what we club, strive for like because that said, is what football has always been. The top it? clubs will. The top clubs will still be... Well, of course. Up. It's still going to be saying. dead difficult. Manchester United, this is where I go back to me, like me merchandise one is. Manchester United will always have more money than everybody else. But don't harm Everton because they can't sell as many shirts as Manchester yeah. United because that's what it is. It's, yeah. you're, stopping us from, you're stopping us from spending our own money, if we had any, because we don't... We don't do as well yeah. as Manchester United yeah. or as well as Liverpool yeah. because we have worldwide fan bases who, who have been... Lucky enough to build teams that have won Champions League and established worldwide fan bases. Yeah. 
that's fine. It's I have lucky, no. Is it? I have no. Exactly. I have it's no been problem. Successful. I have yeah. no problem with it. Well, there is there is a touch of luck in it, John. Maybe, though, if, isn't there? maybe if we'd been allowed in Europe in certain years, we would have been able to have done yeah. that. There is, there is. It's, it's um, one follow. Well, maybe we found an owner who gives us more money than we knew what to do. No, with. no, spent it no, better. One that, follow. You know that, and that's second. absolutely. I know, I know, I know. That's an absolutely I'm fair shout, John. An absolutely fair shout. No, no, right. But what I'm saying, what I'm Come. saying is, is that just allow people to spend their own money mm. in a sensible way and stop, just stop stopping them. That, yeah. Surely that's got to be the most sensible. No limit. Otherwise, no, no, no limit. The limit. The yeah. limit. The right. limit. So if you do the fear, right? Sorry, we're getting there. I think we're getting dead close to consensus here, aren't we? Right? If we set aside the one I said, which is everyone gets the same limit, mm. which I think is the easiest. Yeah. It's two hundred fifty mil. Everybody, you've got mm. three years to get in line. Players will have to move around then because yeah. City won't be able to afford all of them stockpiling and all sorts of things, right? If you then set a limit based on ownership, ability or preparedness to pay, if you give that a limit and the limit is what the most in the league currently spends, mm. how can anyone say that that's not fair? Mm. The problem is of people saying other leagues in Europe and all that, and then if, yeah, there is a there is a there is like a, a, a difficult like level to find because if Madrid are going, I'm paying them back by five hundred. Grand no, no, shot. sorry. It's still difficult. Sorry. Man City, we use that. Okay, as... we can't keep going back and forth because yeah, no, it's no, dragging on. Go on. So, well, the, someone's saying, oh, other leagues. Other leagues have got nothing to do with it. No, but Man they will. They will, though, because they, what the Premier League hide behind is, well, you're weakening us in Europe. Why? But that's what they say. Hang on a sec. Just, uh, that's we, what they we, say. You can shut it down in a sec, yeah? Manchester City, most successful club on the planet, turn over £600 million a year, whatever it is, mm. near to 700 maybe or over, whatever it is, right? And all we're saying is, if Luton want to spend... Yeah, yeah, that, I'm with they you. Can, that doesn't devalue the league in I'm any really, way. No, yeah. if you and, and I think the better example is... Just, I think yeah, the best, yeah, just one, finally, yeah, the better example is, Newcastle or and Villa should not have to sell their best players this summer. Yeah. They, that's, that's the best way to look at it. Yeah, because it the competition it, it will be harmed by a... a a Newcastle Spurs or 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 or, or a Villa having to sell their best yeah. players that harms the competition. Like that we makes, had to sell us. That makes other teams yeah, back in the weaker day, yeah. in terms of a year ago. In terms of competition, who do play play week in and week out? Yeah, yeah. The strength of the Premier League is the strength of the teams. Yeah. How good they are against each other. Absolutely. You're right. Right, uh, Jennifer, your your sort of saying what we've already said, which is about the which is a salary cap is probably the best way to do it, but it's never going to happen. So, yeah, there isn't loads of... Sh you know, chic saying you want a chic become a sports wash, an entity. That's just the way it is, isn't it? It's already in the game. A salary cap, of course, is is a good way to do it, but it's how you get people to agree with it. it the squad cost ratio mm -hmm. that you ever have is yeah. a salary cap. I See, I like competition for me should literally be anyone can win. But that isn't the Premier League because you can't. So, Premier uh, League clubs who are competing in Europe were going to have to comply with UEFA's regulations, to, but they, therefore it makes sense that the Premier League one is similar. Right. Sorry. I'm not going through the dice stuff. I know a lot of people saying sack him, and we've got people going, yeah. I love him, he's amazing. He's not amazing. Okay. He's done all right. He's yeah. not amazing. But at the same token, sacking him yeah. is not going to do anything right now. Look at it again in the summer. But you need someone in charge of your club first. Just one last thing, Baz, on, on the Go statement. very the quickly then, so yeah. we can finish. Um, in the statement that they made, they clearly indicate that EFL will have to have a similar rule, which is what Ped's mm. talking about, being the same instead of different. Yeah. yeah. But there's an implied threat there. The distribution of money from the Premier League to the EFL only comes if they comply with that. That's just seen, yeah. They're not giving them any more. Yeah. Uh, just dead quick, uh, Josh, yeah. He's watched the PL2 video of Rom's goals and he's devastated. Yeah, well, be amazing to have a striker. I could score, wouldn't it? Um, Steve Kelly says, uh, I get what you're saying, 90 to 100 million for Bramfway, but does the lack of ownership at the club um, means we'll probably be, you'd probably go for less, basically. Other people saying, don't let him go for less than a 100 million. Yeah, uh, Steve P says, reality is if United come in from the summer, he'll be gone. I can't see him going anywhere else. Keep seeing Real people Madrid. saying, why would he go to United? That's comical to me. We're really going to try and pretend United aren't a huge step up from us. One of the biggest, but they're the biggest club in the world, aren't they? Real Madrid, the second, apparently. Probably won't be in Champions League next season, though. Doesn't matter. 
I'd go to United from Everton every day of the week. Given the choice of the Champions League club or given the I don't, I don't think that matters, John. I okay, he's 21. I think he'll go, they're a huge club. If they get it right, they'll win the league, let alone be in the Champions League. So I don't think... Real Madrid will never, are never, ever coming in for him at 21, ever. So his, his options will be City. But I don't know whether City will come in and pay that money anyway. No. His only real viable choice will be Manchester United, and that's where he'll go, up the road. But it's up to Everton to go, mm, you're not going anywhere. That's right. And if, if you are going, you're going for 100 million. And if they don't pay 100 million, you're not going. Next summer, maybe. But this summer, we can't afford to leave. And as you know, and we've talked about it more than once, yeah. negotiation, part of it is convincing the It's like playing poker. Convincing the, the other party you've got a hand good enough to say no. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think that would be And if you sell old man, we will have. That would be the concern within where we are today mm. and it's not just about the current incumbents it's replacing them with triple seven for example mm. and and whether they're going to bring along the people who have the right skills and experience to be able to negotiate yeah uh, steve guy says if we stay up we need a new manager dates will have done his job and we all need to move on a new manager will reshape the squad which is now wholly in dates image and that'll need money so yeah i do think branthwaite and a few others will leave to fund the spending uh, Steve, yeah, I've seen Roger Fernandez. Um, yeah, I have. Yeah, in fact, Zach's bought him on Football Manager. <laughs> uh, right, Andrew says if we go down, we'll need to keep him. But if we stay up and he goes the Euros, we'll probably have to sell him as well as Onana. My worry is Triple Seven take over, sell both of them, use the money to finish off the stadium, and sell us on and make a quick profit. That'll Andrew. I wouldn't just the stadium's put, nearly finished. I wouldn't, but I wouldn't just put Triple Seven in that. These people have seen loads in the comments, you know, don't sell to triple seven. Get anyone who comes in may well just asset triple Our finances don't change depending on the owner. So no, what I'm saying is that it, there's like there's this mad thing that it'll it'll only be triple seven who do that. The people who are, are not putting the money where the mouth is and hiding in the shadows, if there is any, um they will be looking to strip Everton. And they'll owe triple seven. And they'll owe triple seven, even more money. So, yeah. Um, where are we? Dad says it'll be John Stones all over again, I'm afraid. Uh, everyone has to sell. Simon's right. Everyone has to sell their best players, except maybe the, the top six. Yeah. Probably um, the top two. With, yeah, three, maybe. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, John. Every player has his price. John Galton says Dyke's the best manager for now. You better start winning some games. Breaking 30 year old records for not winning a game mm. is, uh, is not very good. Um, I'm just seeing if there's anything else there. Just brand tweet, yeah. And Barry at P says he might not, uh, John, uh, sorry, is that a brand tweet? Might not go anyway. Might not want to go. And that's great if he doesn't. Right. He might look and go, um, he might look and go, I want to stay here for yeah. another year because I'm playing every week. I want to develop. I'm 21. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Kev Murphy says, you know if we sell Jared Brantwaite, we're getting Ben Me. We probably are. Him and Josh Bramwell. Um, <coughs> Ghost says, how's Dice done okay? Baz, you being on the aisle. No, don't drink, mate, really. Um, I said he's done all right. He has done all right. He's had a difficult hand. I'm not saying he's good. Other people are saying he's amazing. I don't get that for you, Mean, personally. Yeah. He's done all right. He's, kept, he's had a difficult hand to play with. But three months, nearly four months, without a win is unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. So he's got to, he's got to sort it out. If you like him, Ghost, you might think he's done amazing. I don't know. If you think he's done amazing, fine. That's I'm, I'm not telling you how to think. If you want to know he's done a good job, just compare the last the outcome of the last 11 games with the 11 games before that because the 11 games before that was pretty much the same players and a lot mm. of the teams we've played are the same ones by the very nature mm. so all I'll something's say is gone wrong somewhere. all I'll say is and I don't I keep seeing this thing of like it, it all went wrong when Onana missed the pen no that's not to me that's absolute nonsense absolute nonsense that's an anti anana view yeah it? yeah that's nonsense but Frank Lampard was sacked for less, and so was Rafa mm. Benitez. And uh, ironically, Rafa Benitez has just been sacked again by Celta Vigo. Oh, really? So there you go. There you go. Uh, and Sophie, Sophie Gallagher, it isn't a miracle 
Dice has kept us afloat, though, is it? And this is—I'm just said he's done all right, but it's not a minute. I, I, he hasn't anyway, kept us up anyway. I, he hasn't it kept is us what up it yet. Is. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, Sophie says Dice is lucky. Peak Machiri, he's not there anymore. Otherwise, he'd be gone. Yeah, he would have been sacked ages ago. Machiri would have still been interested. But there's no point. In my opinion, there's no point sacking him now because who are you bringing in? He's just got to—he's got to start winning games. You Too look late. at it in the summer. When everyone's calm, you look at it in the summer and go, no, it's not for me. And you, you move them on or you go, now. yo, yeah. you think, but... You we'll might see. make your decision now, mm. but execute it after the season's finished. Emma says he's lucky he can hide behind the points deduction. He's added, he has, no matter whether you think he's good 11 or awful. Games. 11 games. He hasn't won for 11 games, which is nearly, when we play, you know, three omens all season, atrocious. However, he has had a very difficult hand to play as well, but it's still... Shouldn't get to a stage where you don't win in the, the hand hasn't got more difficult as mm. the season's got. But anyway, hasn't. anyway, listen. Anyway. Right, we're going live on more than a game at two o'clock. Thanks for joining in. Stay there because we'll be back in like three minutes. So see you in a minute. 